Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video I am continuing on with our bathroom makeover series and I'm going to share with you how I transformed this bathroom floor in $55 using the Floor Pops peel and stick tiles. So let's get started. So quickly before we start, um, I went on Amazon looking for the different Floor Pops tiles and they did have a lot of options and a lot of different designs. So be sure to check out Amazon. I also went to Lowe's just to see what they have. These were their peel and stick options and they also have them um, groutable as well which is a little bit more money but I'm sure that it lasts a little bit longer so check out your Lowe's Home Depot and just go with what you really like in the end I ultimately decided on going with the floor pops tiles from Amazon they were quick delivery and they were less than ten dollars for five tiles so I ended up getting five packages so in our bathroom, we had this linoleum that was climbing up the vanity. I decided to take it all off. I did not want that um, look. So I actually just used a utility knife um, and cut a line there and pulled it all off. There also was like a little bit of wood underneath that I kind of had to chip off using a screwdriver and a hammer, but it's pretty easy. I got that out with no problem. Next, I went through with a little broom and a big broom to just make sure all the dust and debris and anything that's loose was uh, swept off. And then I went through with a cleaner. This was just a mix of Lysol and water and cleaned the floors really well. So these are the Floor Pops Peel and Stick Vinyl Floor Tiles. They are 12 by 12 tiles and they come with 10 tiles in each box. I would recommend buying an extra box or two just to allow for any error or they do um, have a little bit of texture that, on them but they are pretty thin and also flexible so that's nice. I recommend reading the directions and making sure that these are right for you and your home. So the tools that I used was a pen, a utility knife with extra blades, and a angle ruler, I believe it's called. So I am nowhere near a professional. This was my first time doing this, so it really did take me um, like a groove to get into and once I figured it out it was really easy but this doorway was a little challenging I just wanted to make sure that everything lined up correctly since it is the entryway I wanted it to look you know flawless when you walk in um, and then you had to allow for those little notches around the doorway so before I actually stuck anything down I uh, laid everything out and made sure that it aligned right that the designs were right so I kind of had a little map and a little idea of which tile was going to go where. So starting in the entryway I butted that first tile right up against our other laminate um, that continues from the hallway and I wanted it to go right in the center just so when you walk in it looks centered and makes a nice entry. So this was the little notch that really threw me. It was a little bit challenging to get around, but I finally did get it. I am not good at measuring at all, so if you aren't either, um, the only thing I can say is persistence is key. You just gotta keep trying and trying and trying. Keep measuring, if it doesn't work, try it again, and that's why you buy extra tiles to allow for air. So this is the two inch line that I was notching out. That rectangular piece had to be um, notched out of the tile so that I can allow for space to butt it up against that corner on the wall. And normally people will remove their baseboards um, while they're doing flooring. However, these baseboards in our bathroom were really old, so we plan on replacing them anyway. Uh, the baseboards we're gonna go with are a little bit thicker than these, so it wasn't a big deal um, if there was a tiny gap. 
So making the cuts on the tiles was a little tedious. It does get a little sticky. But other than that, um, I would just say go slow rather than go fast. It worked easier for me that way. Like I said, I am kind of a perfectionist, so these little gaps I wasn't really that happy with, so I kept um, taking it off and making sure that it was notched out just a little tiny more to make sure that everything was even and looked good. The adhesive on the back of these tiles is very forgiving. I did lift that tile up in the center and move it just a tiny, tiny bit, um, and it still sticks. We've had no problems with them not sticking or coming up or anything. They are very, very good. So continuing on with the other side, I liked to make sure that every single tile matched correctly. There were some tiles that did not match up, so just be sure that you double check that um, if you want a very seamless look. And here's the first progress shot about halfway through. It's so exciting when it starts coming along. After this, um, things start moving along really fast and you just kind of get the hang of it. Hang in there, it gets easier. So for this next part, I am going to show you how I went around the toilet. Now you have two options with the toilet. You can take the toilet off and go under it, or you can go around the toilet. I personally did not want to take the toilet off, so I went around it and it worked so well. So I just took a white piece of computer paper and made a stencil to trace around the toilet. So let me show you how I did that. I put the paper down, literally traced around the toilet with my fingernail making a line. Then I went through with a pair of scissors and cut on that exact line. Then I double checked that I got it right. I put the paper back down, make sure everything is in line with the other tiles and the toilet and that it's not um, like rising up on the toilet. See, you can see you want the tile to go right at the toilet and not be coming up on the toilet just in case you ever have to take it off um, it's not gonna get in the way so using a second piece of white computer paper i just continued around with that curve on the front and attached it with tape so i made my own stencil and it worked really well then i totally missed the shot but you can see how it all aligns perfectly and then I placed that paper on a tile and traced it out. So there was the stencil tile and it fit perfect. So here is a progress shot on the toilet. It took several stencils but it went really fast. Then after that all I had was those rectangular pieces and we were done. So, and here is what it looked like when it was all complete. I see a world of a difference. I really, really like how it turned out, especially with the green vanity. Um, I think it looked really, really good. So I still have to go in with some seal and seal around the toilet. Uh, I don't want to get any moisture or water or anything else um, in those cracks and also along the bathtub line we also need to do that 
So let's take a quick look at what we started with this ugly blue linoleum tile and now we have this. What a world of a difference. And the total cost of this project was $55. So make sure you're subscribed to our channel. We still have more coming with decor DIYs for this $100 bathroom makeover. Leave a comment below if you have any questions at all. We would love to hear from you. Don't forget to hit subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.